after trade deadline when you're so busy? I mean, is the next day a maintenance day for GMs? <laughs> yeah, I played some pickleball this morning. <laughs> We got a game coming up tonight, so so no rest for the wicked is basically what you're saying. Yeah, you're right back well, at it. Maybe a little less phone calls today than, than in the last couple of days. But well, I'm glad. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy you picked up the phone when we called you today. But I wanted to ask about. I mean, you've made some pretty big moves. Obviously, there was you know a, a, a pretty trusting relationship there with Ottawa, and you got to Shane, you got to Zingle. I mean, Adam McQuay. We're looking at these big deals. Keith Kincaid comes on over, and you keep. Panarin as well because you know, a lot of eyes were just on that player and we know you had said you've really got to you know blow the doors off uh, if I'm ever going to consider trading this guy so now what is the message you really wanted to send the players in that room with the moves you made uh, I guess the message is that we believe in our group we, we believe in our team and we wanted to make it stronger we well, we still have a two-time visitor go Trophy winner Sergei Bobrovsky and and our Timmy Panarin in our lineup, but now we also added uh, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Dezingle, and Adam McQuaid and, and Keith Kincaid. So uh, I think we have a strong group, and, and um, you know, first we got to make the playoffs, and then we want to make a long run. You know, Yarmo. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I, I love the fact that you're betting on your team and betting on yourselves. I, I really do. I think a lot of times everybody talks about, oh, you have to get something. Well, what about trying to get something right away, like success and for your young group? But it seems to me, as you were going through this process, you have really, really solidified your forward lineup in terms of like you know your offensive lines getting players into uh you know into roles that they can better excel at how important was was that for you in in terms of when you were examining the the opportunities and the possibilities and then ultimately what you got uh, yeah i think the depth and the um and the roles as you said um, well defined roles if you want to call it are, is is very important i think we have um elements of a little bit of everything in our forward lines now we have skill we have speed we have one line with with uh, nick felino and boone jenner and josh anderson can play very heavy and and fast game and, and physical and and uh, we have some of those same elements in in uh, in the line with eric robinson who's played extremely well since he's come up from from uh, cleveland and uh brandon dubinsky and, and riley nash line so and then we got uh, Pierre Luc Dubois with uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand and uh, Ryan Dezingle now is a new line with with Ryan playing his first game and and the first line remains the same with Panarin and uh, Duchesne and Cam Atkinson so I think there's a little bit of everything in, in those four lines uh, as I said and I think defense has been a big big strength of our team before we're missing Ryan Murray right now he he had played extremely well up to his injury. And he's going to be out for a little bit here. So we added Adam McQuaid, another right-handed shot that balances out our defense pairs. And uh, but we have good mobility, good puck moving ability on our on our D's D's D pairings. And and but we have some size and physicality now too with with guys like uh, David Savard and Adam McQuaid. Yarmo, heading into trade deadline, you know, a lot of media members will always ask the coach, what is it that you want to see added to your team? And then the trade deadline comes and goes, and then they get asked again, do you like what was added or, you know, subtracted from your team? And I'm wondering how the conversation went with John Tortorella, because he clearly seemed like he was in a great mood, answering reporters' phones, having conversations with their mom. I mean, if you look at that, it feels like, you know, Torts is feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Torts. <laughs> Torch has, uh, has, has had some classics, and that was a great one. The, uh, answering Tom Reed's mom, yeah. even I, I like that one. Sometimes I don't like his pressers, but that one I love. Um, so it was, uh, it was great. So I don't, I don't know. We haven't really. He, I kept him up to date, obviously, the whole time. I have conversations with him every day, and and I think we're on the same page on what our lineup needs. Uh, and uh, so we've been communicating, and you know, he's the first one to know when we when we get a player. And, and, and I ask him about line combination. If we get a get this player or this defenseman, how the power of the pairing is going to be. So he knew the whole time where we were at. Uh, is he happy? I hope so. And I think so. <laughs> that uh, you know, he, he's in a good mood, but he's he's in a good mood a lot more than than uh, he 
he appears at the uh, the pressers. I can assure you that because I deal with him every day. He's actually a very nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and and it's a big game tonight, right? Because you're taking on Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, yes, you have a game in hand on them. They're they're one point behind you. But how do you feel now when you're look just looking at your division and matching up and getting to see everything you've done really kind of come together tonight in a big game? I look at it as every game from here on in is a, is basically a playoff game. That's it's such a tight race here in the East and in our our division in particular. And and so um, you know it's a, it's a big game tonight. It's a big game on Thursday and another big one on Saturday and Sunday. So it's a big week for us. Um, that's for sure. And, and uh, you know we'll we'll start gelling together uh, today. And it's the first day together with the group that we're going to have here until the end of the year. And uh, you know, guys in the room seem excited. This is why we're doing what we're doing. It's it's for them. Mm-hmm. It's for the room. It's for the players to have that opportunity that uh, they cherish every every springtime to uh, to get into the playoffs mm-hmm. first and then then get an opportunity to compete with what they all dream about. And, uh, so it's um, it's the ball. they got the ball now, and I hope they start running with it. And uh, you know, we have a really tight group of guys here that. that uh, love working with each other and, and uh, you know they, they trust each other I think they they believe in the group so you know tonight's going to be the first night of this group together so quickly Yarmo last year pushing Washington right up against the wall in round one and, and the year before I thought you played very well against the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and two teams that went on to win the cup how much watching your group and, you know, Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski players were part of that, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois last year and, and many others. How important was that when you watched how close they came for you to have that confidence that the group, given the ball, could run further with it? Yeah, I, I think that they have all have added experience. Now Seth Jones is growing as a player every, every year and he's still only 24 years old. Yeah. And and in my mind, he's one of the best defensemen in in the league. If you um, if you look at the way he defends, on top of how how much um, he contributes in the offensive side of things as well. And and um, you know, as I said, this is a this could be it. The old the last spring that we have the Vezina Tro- two time Vezina Trophy winner in our net. So I think that our group is is poised to uh, to uh, make a run here. So let's let's give it a best uh, our best shot and. Uh, the added experience for sure helps, and, and the, the bitter pill that we had to swallow last spring. But uh, I think it's a good, it's a great lesson, even though it was bitter. But um, we can use it to our advantage this spring. Well, Yarmo, you've made things very interesting. I think a lot of people, uh, whether it doesn't matter what team they cheer for, it's just uh, a lot of eyes will be on Columbus. Thanks so much for taking the time and taking our call here today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. That is Yarmo Kekalainen, the GM of the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are very busy uh, adding some big-name players. As we have mentioned, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Dezingle, Adam McQuay. They added Keith Kincaid as well. They're sitting third in the Metropolitan Division. And, I mean, he's acknowledging it. It's, it's something we all know. It's not like you're hiding it. But he's like, this is, you know, most likely going to be the last time we have a two-time Vesna winner in our net. And that it's probably the last time you're going to have a guy who can score the goals and get the points that Artemi Panera has. So you're sending the message that this we're all in. Well, no, not only, like, it, and it, it's some teams go all in, but they're they're doing it without uh, a real confidence. And I think that that's very different with Yarmo. He's doing it with a confidence in the group and what they can do. And he, he said, "Hey, listen, they're a good group. They're a tight group. It's it, it's a painful lesson, but he, I see." For me, and, and that's why I wanted to met, say it to Yarmo. I love the fact that they're betting on themselves. And to me, there's too much of this. Oh, what about next year? What about this year? Oh, you better get a draft pick. What about right now? And that's what Yarmo Kekalainen has absolutely recognized. It's about right now.